Shall we get to the main event of this podcast and talk about the last thing any of us wanted to talk about today? No. Sure. Okay. The Chicago Blackhawks are back in the news, everybody. <sighs> Indeed. So, so, Sin, what are you having for dinner? Yeah. Let's not talk about <laughs> to talk about anything yeah. else but, but here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so the crux of this issue, and by the way, um, there was breaking news that in recapping this incident, there will be no subsequent discipline uh, towards Rocky Witts, Rocky Witts, for his role in this incident. Because of course not. No. Why? Why would you face any discipline for making the NHL look like a joke? Although, before talking about this, I do want to mention that in talking about the Blackhawks, because I'm going to bring up a couple of things here. I want to shout out the the Calgary Hitmen, who are giving away or who are doing this uh, the special jersey. They're selling them on their website. Uh, with the title, Every Child Matters. Portions of the sales for these jerseys are going towards supporting youth sports programs for, and correct me if I mispronunciate this, but the Sixika Nation in Alberta. Uh, the logo's really cool. It's the Calgary Hitman's mask, but it's kind of got like the headdress, the feather attachment. And imagine that. Um, you can do something respectfully uh, for a nation and supporting a, a nation like that. Uh, without having to have a, a, caricature, a caricature of a person's face as the logo for the jersey. Imagine. Um, the, the summary for this for certain Hawks fans, and I will, I'll tell you right now what this is going to be. The Chicago Blackhawks fan base is one of the best in all of sports, not just hockey. You guys are fucking awesome. Bottom line. I say that as a Bruins fan. 2013 happened. None of this is intended as a shot at the Hawks fan base. That team needs an ownership change. That team needs arguably a name change and certainly a logo change. That organization means nothing. In a sense of what has happened and what has been revealed, the logo is not viewed positively. The name, the brand, it's dead. That is a dead brand. And I think the best thing for that team is to completely rebrand. I'm not saying move them out of Chicago. It's time for a new era in a lot of ways. Wanted to show, wanted to throw that out there. I will read off the exchange that really kind of sparked this between Mark Lazarus and Hawks owner Rocky Wirtz at a town hall style meeting in which the question was asked by Lazarus. My question is for Danny Wirtz who is also a part, of course, of the ownership group in the front office behind his dad. I know we're looking forward here, but I think we have to look back also. I think much of what happened to Kyle Beach stemmed from the power imbalance between a coach and a player and the powerlessness of a player in that situation. So what are the Blackhawks doing? What have the Blackhawks done? What will the Blackhawks do to empower a player in a similar situation to make sure that doesn't happen again? First and foremost, fair question. Absolutely from Mark fair. Lazarus. Absolutely. More than fair. fair question. Directed at Danny Wirtz. His dad, Rocky, interjects. I'm going to answer the question, not Danny. I think the report speak for itself. Speaks for itself. The people that were here or the people that were involved are no longer here. We're not looking back at 2010. We're looking forward. We're not going to talk about 2010. Mark Lazarus responds, I'm not talking about 2010. Rocky Wirtz, I know, I'm not either. We're not going to talk about what happened. We're moving forward. That's my answer. Now, what's your next question? It's disgusting. Yeah. I'm more tone deaf can you be? Like, I'm laughing at a frustration that he's just like, you know. They've learned nothing. They've absolutely learned they nothing. Get... It is beyond fair for us to say, hey, oh, so you're shifting culture. Okay, what are you doing? You don't get to just say like that's the problem and in, in, like when they when people get busted and shit they're like oh I'm sorry and everyone's like okay well they apologize that means everything's better no you have to actually show that you've changed it's the same thing every every all these other situations of Andrew Kane everything oh he deserves a second chance why they have not shown that they've changed why should Rocky Verts get off the hook because he wasn't involved with the organization okay this stuff happened what have you done to shift things away what are you going to do as you know the question was asked to protect these players what real change has happened 
people deserve to know that. And you should want, you should feel compelled to tell the public so you don't continue to be the organization that covered up rape. That seems like a pretty good option to want to show how you're better than the organization that covered up rape. But that's just me. Oh, well, Sin, how does this make you feel that Wurtz was then quoted in saying, we are the Chicago Blackhawks and we set the tone of hockey culture? Yeah, no. I, yeah. Boy, I don't think he realized exactly how that one came off either, does he? Mm-mm. I'm Well, it, he's, they sure do he's set very the tone, correct. don't yeah. they? Yeah. They not only set the tone, but they are completely in line with what hockey culture is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, Rocky Words said, I know. I'm not talking about it either. We're not going to talk about what happened. We're moving forward. That's my answer. Now, what's your question? His son, Danny, interjects and says, I can pick up, too, what we are doing today. And I think his father cut him off. Yeah. Just as, Danny tried to, as Danny tried to answer the question. Rocky says, no, that's none of your business. That's none of your business. What we're doing today is our business. I don't think it's any of your business. He's Mark right. Lazarus responds, how was... How is that not my business? Rocky Wirtz, because I don't think it's any of your business. You don't work for the company. If someone in the company asks that question, we'll answer it. And I think you should get on to the next subject. We're not going to talk about Kyle Beach. We're not going to talk about anything that happened. Now we're moving on. What more do I have to say? You want to keep asking the same question, ask the next question. And Mark Lazarus ends it by saying, you said enough right there. (laughs) Imagine... And by the way, I mentioned this as well. There is an update as Gary Bettman is undergoing a press conference, uh, mind you. There is no subsequent discipline again coming his way for this. Now, this is how Rocky Wirtz was willing to act publicly. Imagine how he acts when he's not in front of cameras. Yeah. Imagine how those people on stage, including his own fucking son, yeah. feel... When publicly, he's willing to just say, no, you guys shut up. I got this. I will speak for all of us. I am the owner of this team. I am almighty. You know, I looked at the I looked at the photo of uh, Rocky where it's holding the cup over his head. And he has this grimacing look on his face. And like now I see like just a disgusting human being who is definitely complicit of whatever the fuck it is if you had any sort of accountability like of saying like oh you know i had no involvement whatsoever you, you've lost it completely especially to have this sort of reaction to someone to a reporter reporting on something that's happened and having mm-hmm. to give information about how you guys are going to improve for you not to make any sort of comment of saying we're improving by doing this and that it shows that you personally are probably hiding something it shows that you also just are complicit in any facet whatsoever, and you should be stripped of your championship as well. It's ridiculous. He should be thrown out of the organization, but we know Batman's not going to do it, and I'm pretty sure he's going to try to do anything he can to keep this swept under the under the rug or not try and talk about it as much during All-Star Weekend. Well, that's what this was, right? This was a 69-year-old man throwing a temper tantrum because a reporter dared not give him a softball question, mm-hmm. but instead said, hey, how, how's everything going with how you're following up on your promises and how you said you would conduct yourselves yep. after it was found that you guys did nothing while this happened to Kyle Beach? He got an update for And he sure. threw a tantrum. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a big update. Fucking hell. And it wasn't just Mark Lazarus that he snapped at. He also snapped at Philip Thompson for bringing up old business and all the negative stuff. Now, Philip Thompson mentioned on Twitter that Danny Wirtz went out of his way to approach Mr. Thompson, after the town hall, saying he would be happy to discuss team values and culture and protocols to protect the players in the future. Needless to say, he mentioned, at the time I tried to follow up with Rocky, things got a little bit heated. So Danny Wirtz is outright trying to do the right thing. He tried to do the right thing on stage and after when he didn't have to. And his old dickhead of a dad does what he does. Get these old fucks out of positions of power, dude. Like, I'm so fucking sick of it. All these people, like, near their 70s, in their 70s, in all these crazy positions of powers, they clearly don't care. They're from a... They're fucking dinosaurs, dude. And they're... They're... Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's crazy to me. And I, I, I feel bad for Danny, but also, like... 
I, I can't believe it. Like, he just basically got bitch slapped in public. Like, he got told to sit down by by a controlling he ass He is 44 dad. years old, and his dad talked to him like he was a child. I know. Yeah. That is publicly gross. It's gross. Again, no, the next... nothing's changed, and we hope for the best, but it's very clear. At least from the Blackhawks and in that organization, absolutely nothing has changed. Faces have changed. People has changed. Nothing else besides that, and that sucks. And I hope Danny kicks his father the fuck out and actually makes some change because it, it seems like he actually has a motivation and a will to do that, mm-hmm. or he's just much better at PR. That'll remain to be seen, but I'd yeah get, get the old it, fuck out. Yeah, it's like... The, it's Go like ahead. a whole like year or whatever of like nine months of progress and them actually making an improvement or trying to make an improvement was just outdone in ten like in a minute. I mean, they just said they were going to. No, they, oh yeah, they nobody were... believes now that yeah. they've yeah. actually done anything. No, not at all. Now, and here, here's the issue: the very next day, where he says we're not talking about 2010, we're not looking backwards. Uh, Rick Westhead at TSN reports that uh, there are more lawsuits coming the Blackhawks' way. There is a former player from the University of Miami, Ohio, uh, who has apparently filed a lawsuit saying Brad Aldrich has used, or at the time, used his his name, his connections to say, oh yeah, I'm friends with this player and this player. Uh, showed off, I guess, the Stanley Cup ring and a way to build trust. So, at the same time, look, we can't comment on whether or not what happened actually happened. We'll wait to see. Uh, what happens. Obviously, again, I'm not going to sit here and just be like, oh, yeah, for sure, he did this, but Brad Aldrich also does not get the benefit of the doubt. At the same time, it's worth mentioning, the Hawks are still facing lawsuits for this shit while Rocky Wirtz does what he does. And the response, thankfully, from the NHL, uh, particularly the the TNT broadcast, they talked about this, and they absolutely slammed the, the response from Rocky Wirtz, and thank God for that, including Wayne Gretzky, Saying, and quote, if I'm a parent, I want to know if my 18-year-old kid's being drafted by that team if he's actually going to be protected. Yeah. That is so fucking important for Wayne fucking Gretzky to have said that. That's huge. I I literally got chills from just from reading that quote just because how how important is Wayne to the hockey community? And for him to say Mm -hmm. that, that's... That's a big step forward because we, we've been talk, spending all that time talking about how much the old guard sucks and the old the dinosaurs and all these fucking people. And then to have Wayne Gretzky, who is the idol of all those fucking clowns, to say that, at least in public, he's the idol. They're probably bashing him right now in private. But to have him say that is so, so, so massive. Like anyone on the fence, maybe, maybe that'll if it just pulls a few more people across into the light and understanding the gravity of the situation it's it's huge it's, f- it's from a cultural standpoint for hockey to have Wayne Gretzky be on that side of the fence is, is big the next step for the Blackhawks now is finding a new general manager obviously Stan Bowman stepped down this past October when all of this came out uh, they have announced that they have officially conducted interviews with Kyle Davidson who has been the interim GM uh, since Bowman stepped down, he has been with the Blackhawks for 12 seasons. <laughs> Does that instill any confidence that something might change in that front office if you're going to have someone stick around who's been there for 12 years? Nope. Oh. They have also interviewed officially Eric Tulski, uh, who is currently with the Carolina Hurricanes. He's been there for eight years. He's an assistant GM right now uh, and previously has served as vice president of hockey management and strategy. Uh, he was also, um, he previously wrote for Broad Street Hockey, NHL Numbers, so he is someone who's a bit more, I'd say, in tune with like the analytical, statistical side of things. And the other name that's being thrown around that might get interviewed is Peter Shirelli. <laughs> I want to fucking throw up. Jesus Christ, not Shirelli. No, what? No, they deserve it. They deserve it. I hope I hope they I hope I hope they get Shirelli. I hope Rocky Wirtz gets Shirelli because he just wants a fucking yes man in there. Honestly, it, it, it I, I think there's a good chance that happens. I hope it does. I think mm-hmm. they'll likely stick with Kyle Davidson because again, he's been there and he knows the uh the line that Rocky Wirtz would like to tell. That's very true. He's probably yeah, I honestly He's probably more of a yes man than Shirelli would be. <laughs> even, even though Shirelli is part of the old boys club, like, yeah, if you have someone you've essentially been grooming there. Um, 
sorry Great. for that for the word choice, but at the same Great time, yeah. it yeah. does fit yeah. in this context, I guess. Uh, obviously, this is when I elected to start this podcast almost a year ago, right? And flat out, again, th things have changed in regards to this podcast, but I was asked to do this podcast for years and at no point did I ever think like, oh yeah, we're going to have to talk about stuff like this. I just want to talk about how this guy missed an empty net the other day and it was funny. Um, obviously, again, and I've, I've alluded towards it before, but different ideas of how to handle this show. I can't imagine, and number one, the show as it was wouldn't have continued in its, in its current form. Um, again, I've alluded towards it in the past. Um, you know, with Deej, he had ideas of how he wanted to have this show go if he was going to be a part of it. And for me, there were more serious topics coming up, and I felt like it was important to cover them. And that that's what it is, you know? And I don't blame him for wanting to have that approach of like, hey, man, at the very least, it's depressing as shit to have to talk about this. Because it is. Who wants to sit here and talk about how fucking garbage Rocky Wirtz is as a person? Oh, but he's done this charity-wise, I'm sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Tax sure. purposes. Yeah, there you go. Um... I don't think any of us want to sit. I don't want to sit here. I won't speak for you guys. I don't want to sit here and have to sit, you know, and talk about consistently, thanks to the Blackhawks, about a lot of this shittier stuff. But it is a hockey story at the end of the day, and this is a hockey podcast. It's that simple. I mean, again, I don't... Based off of how outspoken I have been, and I've talked about this before, like when I started on YouTube and Twitch, really up to about 2018, I tried to toe that line of... I'm just going to try to avoid anything that can be viewed as political and just stay out of it. And look, there are some people that do a very good job of that. And it leads them to certain places. Like, I respect the fact that, you know, and I, I don't want to use him as an example, but I, I look at a Nasher, who I have never seen anything even close to that being discussed. And that doesn't make him a bad person or a good person. It's just I respect the fact that he can do that. But for me, the makeup of who I am... I am a rather vocal person, in case you haven't noticed. I I could not, based off of what people knew about me, how opinionated I am, whether or not you think I'm right or wrong, agree or disagree, but how opinionated I am, I couldn't have, you know, not been able to talk about this type of stuff as it's going on. And nor do I think it would have worked out tremendously well uh, to try and take that approach of, like, let's keep it positive all the time. When weeks later, like not too long after Endo was brought onto this show and Sim was brought onto this show, all the Kyle Beach stuff breaks. Yeah. And you get more of these stories that, yes, are, are negative and shitty to talk about, but they are like intrinsically tied to hockey. You have to discuss this shit. And that's why I wanted to clarify right out of the gates before we really got into the meat and potatoes of the story to Hawks fans that, again, it's not an attack on you. You can't control what the, you can't control the fact that your owner is a fucking dirtbag. I'm a Bruins fan. Jeremy Jacobs is no angel. I am well aware. Jeremy Jacobs is like every other rich white man. Only cares about the profit. That's it. He doesn't give a shit about anything else. Every Bruins fan will pretty much tell you that. But again, when you have stories like this, it's like, what do you do? Do you talk about it or do you not? And you know, I don't I'm not necessarily someone that cares about how I look, like my outward appearance in terms of, oh, well, Tuki didn't talk about this, so he must mean he agrees with Rocky, where it's like, I don't care if people were to think that, but at the same time, I do find it important to be like, hey, Rocky Wirtz is a piece of shit. Yeah. I feel it's important to have that opinion out there. If people yeah. are going to watch and support me, I feel like it's important for people to know that that is how I feel. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree, and uh, yeah... Yeah, and, and to your point, yeah, I think I could have done a much better job at, you know, marketing myself, but that's just not in my DNA. Like, I don't care about my image. I care about what's right, and this isn't right. So I have to I have to speak up on it. I'll be whatever. And but I, my what image I, is me. Yeah, exactly. Like, I am my image. Exactly. I do not put on a front. Yeah. And if that means that certain people don't like me or certain people won't watch me or certain brands don't want to work with me, then cool. We're not meant to. We're not meant to work together. That's not meant to work out. You can't please everybody. 
But I would much rather, and again, it's no disrespect to, to Andrew, to Nasher at all. I respect what he does. I respect that he just kind of stays neutral and focuses on him and what he loves and the content Seems that happy he makes. As fuck and that's for awesome. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, he gets aesthetic. incredible opportunities out of it. I'm not saying or alluding towards like, oh, yeah. I think he's fake. Like, no, I think that just is him. Yeah. We like, you know, I've had good conversations with him. We are different people, as if that is not very obvious. Like, I look up. I'm not saying I don't respect what Nasher does, but I look up to. Uh, say somebody like a, a true Jordy on the YouTube side of things where that guy is just fucking unapologetically him. Don't want to work with me? Fuck you. I don't need to work with you. It's worked out well for him. It's worked out well for other people. Like if me being me and, you know, expressing certain opinions keeps me at a certain level, then fuck it. It keeps me at a certain level, you know? Like if if there are Hawks fans that are like oh, I I don't I disagree with you about them changing the name and the logo. I'm not going to listen or watch anymore. Then hey, I appreciate that you listened or watched in the first place, you know? So, it really is just one of those things, obviously, where I think we would all love to just be able to have that ideal situation of it's all positive all the time because there's only positive stuff to talk about. But, for as long as people like Rocky Wirtz are in position of power in the hockey realm, that's not going to be the case. I have a hunch. There are some positives. Um... We've discovered. Well, we talked about some great positives. Yeah, we, well, I mean, no, no just, just not not in general. Just mean with this story. Um, there's things that yes. we can find with it. There's we're, we're we're seeing that a lot more of the media is stepping up. Um, it's mm -hmm. not just risk, Rick. If Rick Westhead is still spearheading it, and without him, who knows? But it, yeah, to see more media members standing up and you know making a stand and actually asking tough questions. It needs to happen. That's a, that's a pretty big positive. We're seeing a lot more people find the strength to come forward. That's a positive. We're maybe seeing the league hold them accountable. And if they're not, people are ready to jump down the throat and clean house of the NHL. These are positive things because they will lead to the positive sort of change that we need to see. So it is it is good to, to see that. And that's what I kind of I'll, I'll choose to think about before I go to bed is that Rick Westhead is out there standing up for these kids and giving them a voice and that's that's good i think that is the big takeaway from this and it's in a way similar to what we talked about with the jacob panetta jordan suban situation the response from the the media and the public at large is closer now than ever to what it should be mm -hmm. and how these situations are handled and not just kind of brushed off as no big deal or not even covered in a sense. Like there is absolutely a time not all that long ago where the response to this would have been like, Oh yeah, Rocky words. He really fucking gave Mark Lazarus the business mm -hmm. stupid reporter. What the hell are you doing? That was very unprofessional of you to ask Rocky words that question. That 1000% would have been the response. Not all that long ago. Yep. So I think you're right. The takeaway here is how the media responds. It's a lot more in line with what it should be in questioning and calling out Rocky Wirtz. I think the response internally is that you look at Danny Wirtz to say this isn't just an organization that's completely off the rails and that it looks like there are some people in there who, are, uh, you know, thankfully don't agree with the chairman of this uh, organization and will hopefully continue to kind of fight for like, hey, maybe, maybe don't fucking do that again, you fucking idiot. You're making it difficult for the rest of us. Yeah. There are positives to take away from this.